Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500 and welcome back to the new project. I've forgotten what it was called. Welcome back to the new project BG. Barry, sorry. Welcome back to Project Barry. Today we are going to attack the wing, put a new wing on, and we are going to see if we can get that front finished off, get the new bumper which has arrived, the wings arrived. Let's try and get it all done and buttoned up, back on its wheels by the end of the day. Let's do it. Right, today is Friday. Uh, today is very windy, and, but it's a nice bright day, despite the wind that's a little bit cold. That's your weather, now back to the studio. Uh, the reason my camera is pointing at the 500X is, uh, I've just given it a clean. Uh, today is three years old, and today it is going for its first MOT. So as you know, I put that tire on it, the one off of the old wheel and uh, everything works so uh, the only thing I've got to do is take my dash cam out of the windscreen because as you know they don't like things to be in the windscreen when they do the MOT they will either put it in an advisory and remove it or put a failure and then remove it so I'm just going to remove it there's no air fresheners hanging from the mirror or anything like that my phone mount I will take off of the windscreen as well because they don't like that and then hopefully it should pass okay I'll let you know when I get back thing um, I've just taken all the bits off of the old bumper uh, we've got one broken tab on one of these uh, DRLs which is no big deal um, the badge has come off okay uh, the best news of the day is that you, you know what the state of that strip was the, the, remember these strips that I've bought here to go uh, that's the backing bit that goes on the bumper and then you get the black plastic bit that goes off you may have just seen it in my hand considering how destroyed that was that survived that's the bit that I've not been able to get. I, I managed to resurrect the other one for the other car and now I've resurrected that one as well. It's, it's absolutely perfectly 100% fine. So that means I don't have to spend 50 odd quid on a chrome one. There are no black ones available. I never did get around to asking Fiat how much they are. But uh, yeah, that's really good news. Uh, the wing has come, which is up the back of the garage. The bumper has come. Um, and I've taken the number plate and all the bits and pieces off of the, uh, off of the bumper as well. We've got everything we need. So. Once I get back from the MOT, I'm going to get stuck in, get the wing off, get the new wing on, and ho I'm hoping, by the end of today, I'm hoping this is on the road. Well, when I say on the road, I'm not doing the brakes or anything today, uh, and you know, I might have a go at the, uh, the bumper if I've got time to, uh, sorry, the bonnet, once I've got the bumper on, to um, you know, see if I can get it lined up a little bit better, but it will be rolling, it will be driving by the end of today, hopefully and then we'll need to give it a clean up inside. And then, once we've got all these bits and pieces done on the front, obviously there's still the brakes to do, we'll do those at a later date, we can give it a clean to start with, and we can attack this. Now I'm in two minds about how to go about doing this. I'm gonna try some gold, cold glue and some hot glue, um, but I'm in two minds about using the welding machine, because even using the welding machine and pulling it out, I'm still gonna have to fill it. So I think what I'm contemplating doing, excuse me, is to take the paint off, pull it out as much as I can, take the paint off, and then fill it, rather than using the welding machine. I don't really want to use it there. If I was taking the inside panel off, the only thing, the only thing that worries me is if you remember, I don't for the life of me remember which car it was, but if you've been following me for some time, you may remember the car where the Blue and Me unit went, and when I got the Blue and Me unit out, it was actually burnt, melted, and you've got inside the inside that wheel arch, you've got sort of a it's not fiberglass. I'm not sure what it is. It's like a, it's a it's a, it's, a, it's almost like um, a soft loft lagging type stuff that is a sound deadening, uh, and that had completely melted and turned to powder. So what had obviously happened in that car, and I could see that there were welds up here on the inside. There were welds around here. So it, I imagine it had probably had a new rear quarter put on it, possibly, or it just had a dent, um, you know, a major dent uh, repair done. And when they've obviously welded on to, to pull it, it's, it's gone through and set light to the inside of the car. Now that could have, that whole car could have gone up. Luckily for them, it didn't. 
it obviously that stuff melted it did the blue and me and then that was the end of it luckily uh, but I, I don't want to I don't want to be taking if I had to take that panel off anyway then fair enough but I don't want to be messing around taking that panel off when I don't need to as I say I'm good there's, there needs to be filling done anyway um, this bit here may push out a little bit from underneath I'll take the arch liner off we might be able to do a little bit under there um, but yeah that's the plan I think we're going to do we'll, we'll get it out as much as we can using the dent tools uh, the PDR tools and then we'll fill it um, I'm quite happy with my filling skills uh, relatively uh, and painting skills are getting better so I think I can make a decent if I mess it up I'll take it to the body shop and get it done but I think I can make a decent job of that it's not too bad at all so that's the plan that won't be in this video that'll be in another video so this will be in the video sorting out the bumper all those bits and pieces we'll give it a clean inside if we've got time today it depends what time my, my MOT is at quarter to 11 it's about 20 past 10 now so I need to get get a shift on um, when we get back we'll be probably a good hour at least when we get back we'll get stuck into it if I have time before it gets dark this afternoon um, we'll do as much as we can uh, in this video so uh, enough of this waffling um, next time you see me I'll be back with the 500x and I'll let you know how we got on so see you in a bit Right, we are back from the MOT, uh, and as I expected, uh, it passed. It's not there, because my neighbour's got his van there now, so I've parked up the road, managed to get space, but yeah, passed lovely. Uh, it had an advisory, which was under trays fitted again. Again, same, same MOT tester, same venue. They always seem to do that. I still think I have to look on my 500X and see if it's got the old covers on the uh, top of the struts. I think that's what it must be, because again, I don't think actually i've done you know what i've never actually got underneath and had a look maybe maybe the 500x has got an under tray i don't know i'll have to have a look but yeah i don't know why they put that as an advisory i guess it means they couldn't inspect it because they're not allowed to remove under trays of course uh, which is quite a good thing actually um anyway enough of the 500x we need to get on with this it's gone midday now um i need to get this as much as this done as i can today so let's get this wing off with no further ado off not too bad obviously it helped the fact that it was um already off the ground and the bumper off of course uh, yeah as you, you could see me struggling to get that off breaking the um there was a hell of a lot of sealant on that uh, and i did you know i ran a knife down it and i used the old multi-tool and it still wouldn't come off um obviously you have to be more careful when you're taking the wing off to reuse it this is why sometimes you get them and they're a little bit bent because people who are taking them off for, to then sell them uh, are not very careful with them uh, but yeah that's off now so uh, we, as I say we've got the new one the new one unfortunately hasn't got a bumper bracket on um, so I'll have to drill out the other one um, and I think the other one now the wings are the same facelift and non-facelift however there are some differences on the back now those differences so I'm led to believe and I will compare them actually so I'm led to believe are not for any particular reason um let's have a look at it actually let's let's hold them the uh the new one up to the old one so the old one is obviously 2016 facelift one and the new one that i'm putting on is from uh, i'm not sure what year it is actually I'll, before before we look at them I'll, I'll just double check on ebay where i bought it and um make sure see, uh, make sure confirm which year it is from i, I think it's from a an old shape one but uh, yeah we'll just double check that first right we've got to be careful here because i don't want to wind catching this um so yeah this is the new one it doesn't i've looked at the ebay list it doesn't actually say it just says suitable for 2008 onwards um they're exactly the same from the outside they're exactly the same size obviously but apparently they do differ on the back now these two are completely identical there is no difference in these whatsoever so maybe that is off of a facelift model don't know no way of knowing um it's an original but yeah no way of knowing so i will i don't know i'm not sure i think i've got one of my old blue ones from the last blue car out the back still that i've got to get rid of so um i'll compare one of those later we'll, we'll grab that out and have a look at it um yeah anyway let's get this on shall we
we are making progress. Uh, it's much better now. I've <clears throat> I had a little I had a little fiddle. Um, then I had some lunch, and then I come back out for another fiddle. Um, and I I've got it much better. I am almost there. If you remember from the walk, not the walk around video, the earlier on in this video, the gap here was a little bit on the large side. It's now spot on. Um, I moved. I, I, I released the bolts on the bump on the. Um, bonnet uh, and I moved the bonnet itself over a bit and that made it a little bit better um, and we still had that big gap so what I've done is I took the headlights out Th this one wasn't perfect either um, but I've adjusted it a little bit and, it, and it's much better now the gap between the wing and the headlight basically is what I'm referring to um, and this one is okay as well now so I Move, took the headlights out and I've moved the, the top of the wing in it still needs to come in a little bit more I think maybe halfway and possibly the the bumper itself needs to push over a little bit but what, what I also did so when you're <clears throat> when you're doing first putting on if, if you're removing the front panel and you're putting a new one on and so on and so forth there's quite a lot of adjustment in that um, catch and I did it centered as a sort of you know guesstimate center left and right and then right at the very top and that seems seemed okay but of course the bonnet was too far to the right i have so when you so basically when you close it down if the if that is not in the correct position when you close it down it will it will pull the bonnet over so because i had a gap at the side that there is still a gap so it needs to come over a little bit more i'm not even sure if there is a little bit more uh, and i don't know if it is the catch but this is why it's trial and error backwards and forwards backwards and forwards so I don't know whether, yeah, I don't know whether it needs a little bit more. So, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, so if, you, if you're shutting the bonnet and that's not in the correct position, you can it pulls. And generally, I mean, I didn't feel this, but generally when you release the bonnet, you can feel some sort of tension on it and you can feel it. If you look at it, you can sort of see it jump a little bit as you, as you release it. And I did notice that little jump, just a tiny bit. Although they didn't, it didn't feel like there was any tension, it just sort of released fine. So it still needs a little bit of jiggery pokery. Uh, I'm going to try moving it over a little bit more to see if we can line that up a bit better. Well, we've got to line it up a bit better. Um, it may be a, a case of getting hold of the bonnet and yanking it because that's what they do in the body shops. Um, this side needs a little bit more work on, but again, you know, this is a new wing that's gone on, so. There's, the gap is too big, it needs to come down at the front, it needs to go up at the back. That can be done with a little manipulation on the hinges. Um, but I feel... I feel like the front of this wing needs to go up. That's how it feels to me, I might be completely wrong. Um, although I haven't got a bracket on that bumper, on that wing, I'm going to... the reason I've got the bumper out, I'm just going to sort of test fit it and see how it sits and see if that gives me any more of a clue. So I'll set you up for that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. I haven't done it yet, so obviously I'll slot that one side in. I'll get some, uh, where's me, find me uh, washing up liquid, or wherever that may be. Um, we'll slot that side in, this side won't slot in, but we can sort of hold it in place and see if it works. So uh, let me just set you up on a tripod and we'll, uh, we'll, give it a, we'll give it a bash. Right, so we'll spray a little bit of, uh, Washing up liquid in there, just lube it up a bit. Uh, let's pop the bonnet. So it's, it is still snatching a little bit, I think. So I do think it needs a bit of manipulation still. Uh, right, bumper. So this is this is how the bumper was delivered. So. I've got none of the um, none of the bits on it, so I'm going to put one bolt. Where's my bolts? I hope that hopefully that won't fall off when I open the boot. Oh, they're not, they're not in the boot. What have I done with them? I thought I'd put them in the boot. I've lost my bolts now. What the hell have I done with them? Oh, for Christ's sake. 
<laughs> Let me find the bolts. I'm in the garage. Right, I just want to secure just one bolt at the top. Just stop it falling off, really. Right, let's plug it in here. Hopefully it will go in okay. Yep. So that side is good. It's good around the headlight. And if I hold it just here, There we go. Yeah, that's good as well. As much as we can sort of tell. Yeah, once the, uh, once the bracket's on there, so yeah. So that's good. So obviously I can't secure it properly on that side. Um, yeah, just take this off really, it's falling off. Why they, I mean, they've included this with the bumper, but they've taken the screws out. Why would you do that? Don't get it. I really don't get it. It's got three screws in it. Three little Phillips screws. Never mind. Uh, right, where were we? Yeah, so if I'm going to, I'm just going to tighten down that one bolt. Actually, I might have put a couple of bolts in. So I'm trying to not trip over the tripod. I'll put a couple of bolts in. <laughs> Uh, and then we will shut the bonnet and see how it fits with the actual bonnet itself. Squeak, 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 squeak. I should have put some uh, grease in here really, but I will do when I put them in for the final time, but it's just a test fit, isn't it? All right, let's try it. See how it shuts. See how it sits on it, hopefully level. It's got to come forward, but I mean, that might be part of the fact that it's not, um, yeah, that fits all right. That does fit okay. Um, obviously, we've still got a bit of, it seems to fit quite centered. It doesn't seem to overhang at all, as if it's the wing that needs to move rather than the, rather than the bonnet. I don't know, maybe it's slightly, very, very slightly. But that's not a bad first fit. Not a bad first fit at all. Yeah, happy with that. So that will obviously, we, once we put the foam bit on as well, that will help to um, bring it out a little bit because it might be pushed in a little bit too far. So I think we just need to continue with this bonnet. Uh, with the uh, yeah with the bonnet just trying to get it a little bit better i might have to take headlight out again and that headlight could stay in now the, the left hand uh, the right hand one that one you know, i'm not in the shot am i in that one that one can stay in that seems to be in the top right sorted position so that doesn't need to go out um yeah i feel like the bonnet is okay you hit this side no you know what it does still need to come over it does still need to come over the fact that it's got a new wing on you know i'd rather adjust this wing if I can to push that wing over but this this definitely still needs to come over a bit so we'll try we'll have another go with the catch um, we'll do a little bit of manipulation with the, with the, um, the bonnet on the hinges um, see what we can do and then we'll come back um, I say I don't want to I don't want to film all of this because it's just a bit lengthy and boring it you know I've been at it for half hour 45 minutes something like that and I can't film all that so we just come in every now and again and uh, as we make I've spent about another 10 minutes messing around um, we are getting there we're really getting there um, I've brought that side of the bonnet forward a little bit because it was a bit it was a bit too far back now the, it, it does that pretty much the, the gap is too big there it, it's almost like I'm not sure whether the I think the bonnet's got to come down a little bit there. So what I think I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do this now, I'm going to do this some other time, because we know what it's like with these bonnets. You know, do it, think about it, do it a bit more, leave it, come back to it another day, because you only end up losing your rag. And I think what I'm going to do, this side, which was the side that was worse earlier, is much better now, although it still needs to come over a bit. I don't think there's any movement in pushing the wing in anymore. That's in the right place, it's the bonnet. The bonnet has got to come over. So I think on the hinges, I think it's, it's already as far over as it will go. 
so a bit of brute force might bring it over a little bit the um hit the the uh catch is now as far over to the right as it will go um and it looks the 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 gap with the headlights looks absolutely fine both sides so that's sort of okay i mean um, um, it, it's minuscule amounts we're talking of a couple of mil but it makes all that difference on these cars. It is such a fussy bleeder, these cars, to, to get to look right. This is why I hate bonnets. This is why I prefer not to touch bonnets. Um, I'm better now at it, and I am a little bit more patient than I used to be. Um, but it, it does still need to come over this way. But I am getting there. But I think what I'm going to do is I will... I'm not I don't need to change the hinges, but I think what I need to do... It's almost like the bump that the, the wing needs to go up. I think the wing is up pretty pretty high anyway because what I do now when I do it I, I, I do push them up on the bolt I, I sort of put the bolt in loosely up here and then I sort of push it up so it is it is high the only thing it could be is because I've pushed that up it's sort of done that but then you're governed by this side anyway you're governed by where it sits anyway so I think it's probably the bonnet so I mean there, there is always the, the possibility that the hinges were, were, were bent um, so I think what I'm going to do I, I'm going to be able to move the hinges around so if I take the scuttle panel off it just makes it a lot easier getting to those hinges don't think I need to touch the other side but I just need to have a little fiddle under there loosen the bolts and maybe try and move the hinge the actual hinge that's on the car move it down slightly and what, so what you can do to a degree is you can loosen those bolts off, close the bonnet, and then you can try and sort of manipulate the bonnet into position while it's there. And I think, with the scuttle panel off, I think you can sort of get in there and get to the bolts and turn back up again. I think I've done that in the past. But we're getting there. We are getting there. It's starting to look like a car again. I just want to get it cleaned, but until... Um, someone made a point of uh, how, how funny my neighbour's registration number was. And I was looking at it thinking... Love 200. Ooh, oh. So I suppose it is, isn't it? Yeah, he's taking the what's it, isn't he? <laughs> I did actually see a Love 500 uh, registration number a little while ago, which would have been perfect. But if, if I get a van this year, I might actually, if it's still available, um, I might actually get it. It wasn't expensive either. It was like 250 quid or something. So I might do that if I do get a van. Uh, right, so, yeah. It, it, again... It's not right, but it's me being fussy. And but I am. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not that fussy. I have to say. But it's one of those things, isn't it? You, you see it and you want it to be right. And although a customer that was going to come by the car probably wouldn't even notice it, but this like this they would, because it's far too big. This gap they would notice that. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be able to sort it. I'll be able to sort it. Just not today. So what I'm going to do now? Uh, I am going to leave that, uh, and I am going to get the bumper sorted out. Get all the bits on the bumper. And then I am going to put the bumper on and I'll get the arch liner back in. I did clean the arch liner. Um, and then we'll get the wheels back on, I think, once we've done that. And then, if I've got any time left, which I might do, depends, I'm not even sure what time it is. It's about quarter past, half past two. So we've got about an hour and a half daylight left, so it's not an awful long time. I want to get this hoovered. And, oh yeah, just to remind you, when I was in here last week, about four of you have picked up on the fact that I said, oh yeah, there's something I want to tell you about, and you thought I got distracted. I didn't. I did film that, but because the video was getting a bit too long, I didn't want to include it in Wednesday's video. Um, I thought I would um, leave it until Sunday's video, because I was on a little bit of a rant, and I'm going to re-record it, because that rant was just a bit too long. <laughs> you know what I'm like. So I'm going to re-record it, but yeah, it was regarding that seat. So this that will come at the end of this video so um yeah let's get on let's get this bumper on let's get it sorted out back on its wheels move it around hoover it out and i'm probably not going to be able to wash it today i'm just not physically got the time before it's dark so uh, we'll probably come out and wash it tomorrow
guys, so everything's on. Um, I, I plastic welded the other bracket onto the uh, the broken one. Um, some, uh, no, actually it was the, uh, the mobile mechanic that I've been using. He suggested I use this. So we've got super glue, super glue, and then super glue activator. We were talking about it and he, and he suggested that and I never even knew that existed. So uh, I bought some of that and it works really well. Because before I was just using the cheap old pound shop super glue, which you had to sit there and hold. But you put that on, spray the, spray the activator on it and then just let go. And then of course I plastic welded it as well. So that was good. Uh, and that, yeah, even more solid than they, uh, they normally are. So yeah, as I said, there is some painting bits to do on there, but I can do those without um, too much hassle. Um, I might have to do a little bit of masking, but at least it allows me to get the bumper on, so it's not too bad. Um, I took those out of the old uh, front panel, as you can see. They fit in the existing holes absolutely fine. I still don't know whether they should be in there first, and then you plug them into the light, or the other way around. Because I've got a feeling it's gonna be difficult to try and thread all those up. I really don't know. But obviously I'm gonna give it a try. Now I've just drilled, there was a bit of a, um, the end of a uh, rivet up there. So I've just cut that and then pushed it through. There it is, just there. Uh, and I've discovered what the difference is on these uh, bumpers. You see those little triangular bits? Now I haven't looked at the old an old bumper. This is quite clearly off of a facelift. And I have in the past where I've tried to use the, the facelift brackets because they're better, much better as you can see. Um, and it wouldn't fit on. Now it's got a little hook at the end there which you hook there. And I don't know if that's different but it's got those little triangular bits there and they fit into those little triangular bits on the bracket, which the old style ones haven't. So that's the difference. So I think that is all it is. So the only thing is if you, if you get a, if you've got a facelift and you get a non facelift wing, you'd have to use old brackets because they don't, they won't go on otherwise. Um, I think that's the case and we will try it on, we'll, we will have a look at the other, um, another one I've got a blue one I've got out the back we'll look, we'll take a look at that but I think that's it I think that's the only difference but we'll have a look at that after we've finished this or maybe tomorrow but it'll be on this video anyway um yes I need to rivet this on um what else was I going to say uh yes because I obviously if you do it the other way around if you buy a if you buy a facelift bumper a wing sorry a facelift wing and it's already got one of these brackets on you can use it on a pre-facelift car. They will fit. The tabs are the same, but you can't do it the other way around. You can't put a facelift bracket on a non-facelift wing. So this clearly is a facelift. Just wanted to point that out while I uh, spotted it before I actually um, put this on, otherwise you won't be able to see it. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, something I've learned today. And now so have you. Right, I've got the lights on, connected. Uh, I've tested them, they work fine. And what I've done for the time being, so I don't know whether I'm doing this right or not, but I never took those off of there, so they're still connected as they were before. I've run the cable up there and I've just put it there on both sides. Now, in theory, when I now pull this bumper up to get it in position, Hopefully they will be enough slack on there that I can then feed them through. <sighs> Dunno. No idea. Let's try it, shall we? <laughs> right. We just wanna I've lost my bolts again. No, here they are. Um I just wanna get a couple of bolts in the top, like I did before. Just to hold it in position. I'll get my grease out in a minute. Grease is the word. <laughs> Uh, right, let's now get some of me squirty washing up liquid water. And I think it was someone on the channel that told me about this, using this. I'm sure it was actually one of the subscribers, which hopefully if I've thanked before, if not, I'm thanking you now. Seems obvious, but uh, nice. Uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, it's good because you know you learn from me and I learn from you, which is great. That's how it should be. 
Right, that one's gone in okay. Let's try the other side now. We have sort of, you know, put it in position, haven't we? So it should, it should work. Yeah, perfect. All I need to do is get the bolt done up and that'll be fine. That'll be absolutely fine. Excellent. All right, the lights will work. Let me just show you. Get the camera backwards a little bit so I can get the whole car in. I really need to spend some time sorting this garage out. Excuse the camera work. Show you. Yeah, full fits nice. Uh, right, so ignition on. We have DRLs. Working DRLs. They have, oh yeah, I forgot to say, yeah, they have. They have gone up there, so I should be able to feed those up, hopefully. And if we put the lights on, lights are on and the DRLs go a little bit dimmer. Full beam works. That's it. Excellent. Really taking shape, isn't it? Now, actually looks like the front of a Fiat 500 again. I'm really pleased as well that I didn't have to buy that new bit of centre trim that I managed to resurrect it from the old bumper. It was a miracle considering the state of the bumper. But it worked. Right, okay. That's it for the time being. Uh, I'm just going to button this all up properly. And um, obviously we've still got to do the bonnet. We've still got to sort the bonnet out as to where it, you know, to get it in its right position. But for the moment we can uh, get it down. We can get the wheels back on, get it down get it washed. I'm just going to jet wash the uh, arch line on the other side because she obviously drove through some mud or it might have been at the yard actually. I mean it could have been at, um, at the co-part yard. Right I run out of daylight to have my little rant so um, I'll do that tomorrow. We'll be included on this video but yeah we'll, we're all back together. It actually looks really good doesn't it? Obviously we need, still need to adjust the uh, the bonnet but looks all right. Everything's working. Yeah, that still needs to come forward a bit. I don't think it's the, it's not the, um, it's not the bumper, uh, it's not the bonnet that's too far forward. I did try and pull it forward a little bit when I did the bolts up, but I think I need to uh, get something in there and wedge it forward as I do it. But uh, yeah, really looking good. What a transformation in, in, in less than two days work. Unfortunately, as it's dark, I know the camera makes it look daylight almost, but um, as it's dark, uh, I'm obviously not going to wash the car in the dark. Once we've washed it, I can start tidying up these bits on the bumper. But it's not a bad bumper, really. Yeah. I'm really pleased with it so far. As I say, considering it's less than two days' work, and the front of it is virtually done, isn't it, really? Uh, and then we can concentrate on the uh, on the inside and of course uh, the dent. Uh, I'm just going to back it up and um, just, it is insured actually, I'll have to check the um, tax and MOT, I can't remember, I think it's MOT'd and I think it's taxed. I've sent off for the logbook but um, because it's a cat N it always takes longer. So uh, until such time as they issue that, if it is already, if it is still taxed then um, it will be uh, it will be taxed, taxed, so I can actually drive it. Yeah, anyway, let's, um, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll, we'll have a little rent and then we'll go over the car once we've washed it and uh, see if there's any other little nasties that we don't know about. So see you tomorrow. Right, sorry about that, oh, uh, actually, right, action. Okay, so it's the following day, it is Saturday. Uh, it has been pissing me rain all day long. It's just stopped. Uh, it's still really windy, as you can probably hear from the microphone. Um, I don't use a dead cat on this microphone, uh, unfortunately, because it, it, it clips in up the top there and it, and it just keeps falling off. Um, so it's a bit of a pain. Now, I have bought a Lavalier micro microphone, or a lav, as they like to call it in the trade, um, which plugs into this thing uh, and gives you a lapel mic. So uh, I'm going to give that a try as well. I bought a Rode one to go with a Rode mic, which is extremely expensive, but um, if it gives me a bit better sound, I mean, the sound is good anyway out of this, but um, you do get the wind noise and it's in a way sometimes this is too sensitive because sometimes I sound like I've got a chest infection or something you can hear me breathing <laughs> and sometimes what sounds like me sniffing is not actually me sniffing it's a sometimes it is when it's really cold out here of course I'm sniffing like that uh, but often it is actually me 
and a deep intake of breath like that and it sounds like I'm sniffing especially when I'm not on my face isn't on camera um, so I, I was trying to alleviate that and it was suggested by a professional that I asked uh, that I get a lav mic uh, this has an input for a lav mic uh, so I'm going to try it uh, so I'm not using it at the moment as I say but I will try it so forgive me for the sniffing or what sounds like sniffing so yeah I'm going to give this a clean I'm going to give it a snow foam give it I'm not going mental with it just give it a snow foam go over it with a uh, microfiber and uh, then jet wash it off uh, it'll obviously get a proper good clean um, later on uh, once I've done that uh, before I do that rather I'm going to jump just going to jump in the car out of the wind and what have you uh, I'm just going to go on and show you what I was talking about uh, that I was going to put in the last video I'm going to re-record it because I did go on a bit I'll do that um, so some of you keep telling me I'm doing it again anyway yes let's jump in the car and we'll go for it Okay, so we are now in the filthy car. Really filthy. Look at that seat. Oh my God. You've seen all this anyway. Okay, so, right, what I was going on about before, as I say, I didn't include it in the last video because I went on a bit and it was making the video too long. And I am aware that this video is over 30 minutes already now. So uh, I wanted to uh, just be as relatively brief as I can be because uh, I've got one other thing that I want to show you after this. Um, Right, so, okay, so I'm going to put pictures up in a minute uh, and show you. So, if you remember, the rear seat was up at 90 degrees. And I wondered why when I was doing the walk around. Uh, and what was more annoying about it is the fact that it, it, it was up, but it hadn't been, the two bolts hadn't been released. So it was literally bent up on those thin hinges. If you've, if you've worked on Fiat 500s or you've got a Fiat 500, you know they're quite flimsy. It could have quite easily snapped. Now... I didn't know why that was. Then it dawned on me, after I'd done the walk around and I'd finished filming and I was back in here, it dawned on me when I viewed, and a couple, at least a couple of you on the walk around video picked up on this already and made comments. When I, when I showed you the bidding and I went through the pictures on my iPad, um, it showed that the petrol tank was three quarters full. When I got this car, it's sucking fumes. It's not even registering as any petrol in it. I have put about, probably about a litre and a bit in it because I had some left in a can which I've put in it. And then it got me thinking, I, I have seen many times on various Facebook groups that people have been slagging Copart off for what, how they phrase it, in inverted commas, stealing petrol stealing fuel now i've always you know i have bought at least 50 cars off of copart I, I, I should add them up but it's got to be around the 50 mark if not more and i have never had a car delivered which has not had the same amount of fuel in it as when i saw it on the pictures now a lot of people have all said that it's it's been generally been not necessarily just vans but it's been diesels and I thought to myself, and I think I've seen comments from other people that have said that because obviously Copart in their yard, they've got trucks and they've got their forklifts that they load the cars up with. Um, so you can sort of understand why they might take fuel for those. And obviously when they're with the cat bees and whatever, they obviously, they, they remove the fuel from the fuel tank as point of law, they have to, um, when they scrap the cars. So... You know, I'm talking about cat bees that they strip down. People that go there, if you can do that now, uh, and strip the car down, you get a day, don't you, to strip it down. Uh, and then you just leave whatever's left and they get rid of it. Now, they've, they're obviously a dismantler as well as being selling salvage, so uh, they obviously do drain the fuel out. Now, what makes me think they've done it on here is because, for those of you who don't know, under that back seat, there's a black circular plate that's held on by three or four 10 mil bolts. Under that plate, is the um, fuel pump, fuel filter stroke pump. It's all in one bit, and it's under that it's under that rear seat. A previous R bath I bought, which is not one you've seen on the channel, although you may have seen bits and pieces of it from photographs on one of those multiple cars that I've done in the past videos that I did uh, some time ago. Um, when I got the car, it was a, it was a didn't run or drive, no keys. Don't think it had, no, it didn't have keys either. Got the keys cut by Roy the locksmith, um, and when I started the car. I was sitting in it, I started the car, it started, 
No, it didn't start. That's right. It didn't start. And the back seat was out in that case. And I noticed that the, because the back seat was out, I noticed that that black plate had been removed. It was there and the bolts were on the floor, but it had been removed. And I knew that the, the fuel pump was under there. So I had a look. And when I had a look, I saw that the, the electrical connection for that pump, and I think there are two pipes. I think there's a feed pipe, and I think there's then a return pipe, I think, from memory. And I noticed it was at least one of those pipes were off, was off, and the electrical connection was off. So I pushed the pipe back on, I connected the electrical connection, came back to the car, start, car started fine. All of a sudden, I see, in the rear view mirror, a squirt of petrol going up in the air. And what had happened is, what I didn't realise is those pipes don't just push on, there's a little plastic clip which holds them in place, a bit like a plastic circlip type thing. And that was just sitting in like the well where that thing goes. Um, and then the, the back of the car got full of petrol. So I'll quickly switch the engine off. Um, sorry, I didn't switch the engine off, it just died because what had happened was the pressure from the pump, it pushed the pipe off. And then eventually when, the, when it worked its way through the system, the, the, the engine just cut out. Uh, luckily, because that had happened, well, I actually know if I remember rightly, the, 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 the petrol was still pumping out because, of course, the ignition was still on. Um, so I quickly turned the ignition off. It stopped, obviously, but there was petrol everywhere in the back. So I mopped up all the petrol. The car absolutely stank of petrol, as you can imagine. Um, and then I managed to find that little clip, put it all back on, all as good as gold. Now, I can't remember how much petrol that had, had in it, but I can only use, at the time, I thought it must be done for a safety reason. But I can only assume that that's what they did with that one. Now, Copart say that they do this for environmental safety reasons. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the website and see exactly why. That, that the vehicles may not have the petrol, the fuel in it that is displayed in the pictures. Now, this is, it's a bit of a get out clause. Um, and to a degree, sometimes you can possibly justify that. Uh, and as I say, there may be a reason why they've done it with diesels, because they use the diesel. So, you know, it, it, it's a little bit naughty. Um, but as I say, in all the cars that I bought, never had it happen before, as far as I am aware. I very rarely get a car that's got zero petrol or, you know, don't, doesn't register. Now, the fact that someone has done it, and the way it had been done makes me think it's not been done officially by them. Someone has stolen, someone who works at Copart, I think, has stolen that petrol. The fact that, however they do it, I don't know how they would do it. When they're, when they're disabled, dismantling a car, I don't know whether they stick something down the fill and neck or they, disc, they make a hole in the, probably make a hole in the petrol tank and do it. But they obviously know where the pump is in this. And rather than get a spanner and undo those two bolts to take the take the seat off to steal in inverted commas the petrol they've bent the damn thing up on its hinges at 90 degrees now i haven't noticed whether that plate is uh, is missing or um undone or anything like that I, i'll have to have a look in a minute and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it together because the seat's not i've undone the seat and i haven't put it back it's just sort of placed in, into position but you would have seen in those photographs that i popped up uh, I put arrows towards the seat where it's up at 90 degrees and you can see in the pictures from Copart as well that it was uh, up at 90 degrees as well um, on some of them some of them I think were at 90 degrees and some of them it was flat back flat down again presumably before they stole the petrol now I know Copart I'm going to send an email I haven't done it yet and I meant to do it last week I haven't done it yet but and I know Copart they're they're going to make an excuse saying that we, we take the petrol sometimes, we take the fuel, environmental reasons, safety reasons, whatever, whatever they're saying those reasons are, which is fair enough, you know, if that's that's part of their terms and conditions, that's fair enough. What peeves me, and I, I mean, I have gone on a bit on this, about this, and I don't want to go on too much more, but what really peeves me is the fact that they have wantonly, virtually destroyed that back seat. That could so easily have just snapped off, and then that seat is useless, and I would have had to get a new seat. Now that, to me, is bang out of order, and I think someone at Copart has done that themselves to steal the petrol because this was three quarters of a tank. That's got to be at least 30 quid's worth of petrol in there that they've taken. That is bang out of order. So I'm going to stop now because I've been going on for this for a little while uh, and, I'm, and I'm wary of this video ending up too long because as I say I've got one more thing I want to I want to show you before we uh, before we wrap this up. So let me know your thoughts in the comments on this. Um, you know, don't slag off Copart too much because I, you know, I don't generally have a problem with Copart. And you know, I know we we know their terms and conditions are a bit flaky. Um, it's the way. It's, it's not so much they've taken the fuel. It's the way it's been done.
and I am going to email them uh, and complain about it. Um, be interesting to see what they have to say. I will let you know. I won't read you the email out or uh, show you the email because they got the ump out last time. So uh, I will just let you know what their their response is. So yeah, that, that was it. So um, I'm going to stop this bit now. Uh, we've been going for nine and a half minutes waffling on about this. I didn't want to make it too long, but I just wanted to explain it as much as I could. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments about this. Um, be respectful, please, towards Copart. To, you know, as much as you can be. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Anyway, back onto the other bit and we'll come on to that in a second. I'm going to give this a clean and then we'll sort that bit and then that'll be it for this video. So see you in a bit. However, before we do that, I just want to have a look under this seat and see if there's any sign that has been removed. No, if it has, they've all, all the bolts have been done up properly. There's no sign of anything, but I think that must have been the case. Anyway, see you in a sec. So I've got the car covered in snow foam. It's worn off, I think the mixture was a bit weak, but I'm gonna go over that in a second. But I just wanted to come on to what I was say, said I was gonna go through, which was this business with a wing that we went through yesterday when I put that uh, wing bracket on. So I've looked at my old blue one out that's at the back, uh, and that one has got the di that little diamond shape as well that the bracket fits into. So they are the same. This one's got that little shape as I showed you yesterday, and so is the old style one. Um, I thought that that was the different part, but it's not, it's the same. So I was wrong on that. So everything I said about that being the difference isn't. So I actually saw a website where I was gonna buy an aftermarket wing from, and it actually said on there, they are not the same. Although people will tell you that they're, they're the same, they're not, there are differences on the back. I've compared them, they're not, they're the same. They're exactly the same. If you know any different, please tell me, but what I've seen, they are identical. Anyway, that was it, I just wanted to, uh, finish off with that bit so uh, we will call it a day on this one day two is now at an end just getting this nice and clean and then i might give it a little hoover as well uh, so next video will be up on wednesday hopefully i am servicing my sister-in-law's green one on tuesday new brakes oils oil and filter all that old malarkey so i'll probably film some of that as well but uh, yeah wednesday video will be on wednesday and we'll see you then so as always i hope you enjoyed this uh, video hope you've learned something i've learned some quite a bit on this one actually things that i didn't know hope you have too and as i say any comments you've got please leave them down below but uh, as always if you are not a subscriber i would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel give us a thumbs up because that probably helps the most the thumbs up is what gets the videos suggested to other people so please uh, consider just hitting that thumbs up on this video thank you uh, so yeah until next week as always thanks for watching take care stay safe and we'll see you soon